dong, ding dong, ding dong. I saw three ships go sailing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships go sailing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And what was in those ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what was in those ships all three on Christmas Day and on morning? And what was in the ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what was in the ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning?
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord.
from the second letter to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly possessions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. God. registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the, of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among all those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And thank you, choir, instrumentalist, soloist, and Dr. Ben Reed. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. This well-known quote from T.S. Eliot has recently had new meaning for me. It seems like it's only taken six decades to even begin to comprehend this statement as I have been returning to where I started, and I'm starting to know it for what feels like the first time. It is a mystery to me why I left myself behind for such a long time. I kind of left home. It chose never to return. I guess I just didn't want to go there. It felt unpleasant to reflect about the most vulnerable years of my existence. I've always known there was a child inside of me, but I was a master at avoiding him or shutting him down. He popped up quite often in my humor, my fun-loving nature, my wonder my creative urges, all characteristics which I welcome. But when it came to the dark side of how I secretly experienced my earliest life, I sent that part of myself to his room and told him not to come out until he got his act together. There will be no emotional sensitivity or painful preponderance of my early vulnerabilities in this, my success story. Only straight A's were the accomplishments, and a shiny veneer is allowed. When it comes to myself, not very welcoming, very little self-acceptance, no real self-understanding, virtually no self-compassion. We can be downright mean to ourselves, mean, evasive, numb. I know I'm not alone. Even the church embraced her avoidance of the place where it all started, did you know that the very first celebration of Christmas occurred on December 25th in the year 336? Somehow that makes me feel a little better about myself. Maybe I have finally returned or find a deepening return to myself in my 60s, but the church took 336 years to welcome the child 
to welcome the child Jesus. Even then, they did not do it because there was an awakening, a resonance between their spirituality and the vulnerability of the story of childhood, but because they were in search of a way to overtake and crush the popular hedonistic Roman celebration of Saturnalia, celebrated on December 25th. Scholars uh, conjecture that Jesus was probably born in September. It makes me wonder. Had Saturnalia never existed, would the church have ever started celebrating Christmas? It's a scary thought. <laughs> if that's what was motivating this decision, okay, let's bring the child story back. We haven't really covered that one liturgically. Let's get that going. I think of C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, where he describes the Narnia under the control of the White Witch as always winter and never Christmas. Where would we be without Christmas? We'd be living in the winter. The inner winter. Of course, this historical resistance to embrace, let alone celebrate, God taking the form of a child is grounded in our own avoidance of the child. The people have asked, how do we become more child-friendly as a congregation, as a church, as a community? Well, why don't you be nice to the child inside of you? Start there. It is the disciples themselves demonstrate this resistance to the child, to children. When the children wanted to come to Jesus, the disciples stopped it. Put up a barrier. They were the innovators of the first crying room. <laughs> that place where you put emotional children who are hurting and may not even know why they're hurting, but we don't want to hear it. We have no patience for it. Jesus had plenty of patience for it the sense of the wounded child, the suffering child. The disciples saw it as an adult venture. But Jesus said, unless you become as a child, you will never enter the kingdom of God. I take that to mean that the true spiritual journey is based on our willingness to return to ourselves to compassionately acknowledge and be with the entirety of our story. We live in a world that excludes bits of the story. Well, look at this part of the story. Simone Bay, I love the way she puts this. The false God turns suffering into violence. The true God turns violence into suffering. But because we can't deal with our own suffering, we can't deal with the suffering around us, within us, in our world, which is so vast. If we just have the willingness to return to ourselves, to compassionately acknowledge and be with the entirety of our story, the vulnerable places, of suffering, of alienation, of our loneliness, our fear, our anxiety, rather than judging ourselves for the vulnerable moments in our hearts and in our stories. Returning to such moments and to know them for the first time can become the source of our purpose and meaning and our ability to bring something of real value to this world. This deep looking 
according to Jesus, according to Gandhi, according to the Dalai Lama, according to Thich Nhat Hanh, who was nominated by Martin Luther King Jr. for a Nobel Peace Prize, this deep looking is the pathway to peace in the world. It starts by coming home to ourselves, remembering ourselves. As we spend time with those parts of our story, we have unreflectively abandoned. Jesus equated loving your neighbor and loving yourself. They go hand in hand. We must find peace within if we are to bring peace to the world. We need to be with our whole story if we are to be truly present to the unfolding story in our world. A community organizing taught me that passionate commitment to others is always grounded on personal reflection. Deep looking. We must discover what's oppressing us because it's keeping us from truly being present to the oppression of others. And it is when we sanitize our story or keep parts of it out of our reflection we, that we rob ourselves of our true purpose and our true joy. G.K. Chesterton said, Christmas is built upon a beautiful and intentional paradox that the birth of the homeless should be celebrated in every home. The complete story of Jesus' birth includes being unhoused, being an immigrant, being oppressed under foreign rule. It's a story about a couple in a time of impending war, facing what society would see as an illegitimate birth with all its scandal and cultural shame. It is a story about moments of extreme fear and anxiety, which explains the first words out of every angel's mouth. Fear not. I can't help but see that Jesus returned to his child. He returned to that vulnerable time in his life, which created a vision for those experiencing violence, those on the road with no home to go to, those oppressed without hope, without possibility. Because it's his story as a child, how that must have impacted him. And as he stood in front of his disciples and said, let the children come to me. If we let it, Christmas will bring us back to the place where we started. If we truly welcome Jesus and his childlike vulnerability, it can inspire a profound spiritual honesty and awareness that being vulnerable to ourselves will become the foundation of strength, solidity, and purpose. The gift of Christmas is an invitation to self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-compassion. It can inspire us to return to where we started and to know it for the first time. For unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given. May we joyfully welcome that. May we joyful, joyfully welcome our child. And may we watch as such a welcome extends to the children of the world, both young and old. Merry Christmas. Amen.
ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, may we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us with joy-filled hearts offer the fruits of our life and labor to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give, you, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for giving us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.